Welcome to Tech Transformation with CGT and RIS News, where we explore the innovative tech strategies and trends in retail and consumer goods. I'm Lisa Johnson, Senior Editor at CGT. And in this episode, I'm talking with Seth Goldman, co-founder of Eat the Change. Now, Eat the Change is a food company that's focused on helping consumers make conscious choices. And before he founded Eat the Change, he was also co-founder of Honest Tea and chair of the board of Beyond Meat. So he's here today to not only tell us about his latest venture, but to talk about what it's like balancing conscious consumption with making a profit in the food space. So Seth, welcome. Thanks so much for talking with me today. Get us started. Tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Eat the Change. Sure. Great to be with you, Lisa. And uh, I started Honest Tea 24 years ago, so I've been at this for a while now. And um, while you know we've seen some success in terms of the businesses and the brands, there's a lot of work still to do around the impact and the transformation that needs to happen in our food system. So I'm still very much in the trenches. And uh, just last week, I was in a 10 by 10 booth over at uh, California at, at Natural Product Expo. So starting from scratch again, but trying to build a new enterprise to help consumers really opt for planet-friendly choices. And, and the one other aspect of work that I'm involved in is I'm also co-founder of Plant Burger, which is a chain of 10 uh, restaurants, uh, plant-based restaurants uh, focused in the Northeast right now. So um, can you tell us a little bit about why, you know, why did you ultimately leave Honest Tea? Well, uh, you know, I really work focused on scaling Honesty, bringing it to national um, platform. And so, you know, we sold Honesty in 2011, but I stayed on through 2019. And uh, I started to get that entrepreneurial itch. I was ready to start something new. And uh, we really did bring Honesty to, I think, its, its full potential um, national brand. Our Honest Kids line was, is still carried. And, you know, major restaurants like McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, Subway, um, Wendy's, and Arby's. And then we also had launched internationally. So a lot of the goals that I had uh, really came to fruition. And um, I was ready to get back in the trenches and build something new. So in that, you know, theme of being back in the trenches, what is it like being back in a more <laughs> entrepreneurial role? Yeah, well, it is, you know, it, it, people say, well, you've been doing this while, well. you should have more confidence and I do, but there's still something frightening about it, right? By definition, when you're doing something that hasn't been done, you should feel a little, a little nervous. scared <laughs> and, you know, a little bit of worry and lose a little sleep or, or a lot of sleep. And so, um, but I really enjoy that. I know that may sound masochistic, but it's really that fun feeling of adventure and challenge. And, you know, um, I think one of the things that's really characterized all the brands I've been part of is a, is a challenger mindset. And, this idea that you're going up against, um, you know, sometimes that you're going up against changing consumer behavior or you're going up against much larger competitors, but that challenger mindset is really fundamental to all the things I do. And, and it's not hard to have a challenger mindset when you are a startup. So it's funny you talk about that, that fear, you know, there's definitely that, that moment when you're doing something new, right. And you're like, oh man, why did I do this? Right. What, you know, what have I gotten myself into? Did I make a mistake? Um, so, but if hindsight's twenty twenty, you know, what are you, how are you using the learnings from Honest Yeah, oh, there's a ton right of now. learnings I've applied all along the way. I mean, especially, you know, last year during such a challenging um, time for supply chains. And so, you know, it, part of it is you have to recognize the environment. And yeah, you know, during an epidemic, <laughs> you're just, or pandemic, you're not going to get the same responsiveness um, when you, when you need it. So having a little bit more maturity to not panic and say, okay, well, you know, we may have to push this order back a, a, a day or a week because of the issues. So that helped. But also understanding what are the things we will do well and we won't. And six of the longest years we had at Honest Tea were when we owned a portion of a bottling plant. And so when you run into production issues, the temptation may be, well, we should just go buy the facility is like, no, that's not the answer. It's, it's you know, develop great partnerships and, and then help your partners work through the issues. At least for us, that it was, the answer was not to go buy our own sure. uh, production facility. You've talked in the past and you mentioned, you know, how important it was when you launched a kid's version of Honest Tea. Um, it was called Honest Kids. Uh, it's, it's, you know, found in McDonald's. So do you see, can you tell us a little bit about the background on that, how that came to be? And then, you know, do you see a similar path for Eat the Change? Sure. Yeah. So 
Um, we were about six, seven years into honesty growing, and I have three sons, and uh, my middle son is always asking good questions. And so when middle one day child as I was syndrome. putting, I was putting um, food in his lunchbox, and he said, "Hey, Dad, how come you're selling these really healthy drinks to grown-ups, but you're putting really sugary drinks in my lunchbox?" and I think I was doing what a lot of parents were doing. I wasn't thinking about it. And I was just buying whatever drink was basically on sale um, in the grocery store. And then I looked at the pouch, drink, uh, drink pouch I was putting in my kid's lunchbox. And I realized there was more calories per ounce than there is in a can of soda. And that's what I was putting in my kid's lunchbox. So I realized, oh my gosh, we just haven't been thinking about this. We've got to uh, find a solution. And of course, Honest Tea was already... Um, a lot less sweet drink. So the first solution was for my son to start bringing bottles of honest tea to school, but he was a little guy and um, he would sort of come home with a half consumed bottle and um, we said, well, we need a smaller portion size. And then I said, no, what we really need to do is go after those drink pouches and make a healthier version. So honest kids came out as a 40 calorie drink in a category where everyone was selling a hundred calorie drinks. And we, were, we would sweeten it only with fruit juice as opposed to sugar or high fructose corn syrup. And so Honest Kids really grabbed uh, a significant market share and, and, and in a way kind of reset the shelves. We saw all of the competitors, and this is very much true today, if you go to the beverage shelf for kids drinks, you'll see that the average calorie profile is maybe, maybe not even 80, maybe 70, 60, uh, and that there is a lot less um, calories and sugar in those drinks. And so... Um, we knew for Eat the Change right away that when we launched this business, our first product line was a snack uh, for, for adults. It was a mushroom snack. We, knew we weren't going to try to sell that to kids. But I did start that quest. And in fact, when I was at Honest Tea, and I mentioned the, the restaurants we launched Honest Kids with, and several of those restaurants had asked me, can you create an Honest Kids snack, which is basically a, you know, a, a version of what you do with Honest Kids, a healthier snack, that we could offer, you know, if, if a customer didn't want French fries for their kid, what would be an honest kid snack? And so the exploration we did at that time was, could we make a less sweet fruit snack? You know, if, if the fruit snack category is at 80, could we make one with 70 or even 60 calories? And so we, we had explored it. We didn't bring it to, to market. Um, but when I got to eat the change and we started selling um, both environmentally or planet-friendly snacks and chef-crafted snacks, uh, I knew fruit snacks is kind of a dead end, partially, mostly because there's no fruit in them. They're called fruit snacks, but they're really, um, you know, they're maybe sweetened with fruit juice, but usually the first ingredient is either tapioca syrup or high fructose corn syrup. It's just, these are, it's one of the worst or most um, inaccurately named products out there. <laughs> and so instead of um, leaning into fruit snacks, I said, well, what if we could change the dynamic on that shelf? And I, um, my partner, Spike Mendelson, who's my co-founder and a brilliant chef, started um, playing around in the kitchen. And the first direction he went was to explore a carrot chip. Could we make a, a carrot version of a potato chip? And we couldn't quite get the right crispness or the right cost structure. So then he moved in a different direction. We had a bunch of carrots that had gotten delivered to the office. And we have a, a no food waste policy in the office. So he's like, well, I could, I could make soup. I said, yeah, but that's not going to really be it. You know, it's super uh, I don't see exciting that to yeah. <laughs> So um, then he tried taking the carrots and putting them in the same marinade we used to make our mushroom jerky. And while the taste was a little off, it did create an interesting texture. And I said, but that texture is interesting because in a lot of ways, that's the same texture as a, a fruit chew. Um, and then we played around a bit more and we realized if we soaked the carrots in um, apple juice, we could... Um, break down the cell walls a bit, make them chewy, and then, and then impart some flavor to them as well. And so we've just launched this product line. I can show you actually a, a box of it here called Perfect. Cosmic Care Chews. And it is a um, organic kid snack that is nutrient dense. It is a full serving of carrots per pouch. Um, and um, so we're really excited to bring that to market. And um, so far, gotten a great response to it. What's been the feedback so far? So far, the uh, response has been great. We were just out at Expo West in Anaheim and, and um, you know, buyers hadn't seen anything like it. There really is not a vegetable-based snack for kids. And of course, when you can make it nutrient-dense, um, you know, that's just a, a really compelling proposition, not to mention organic. 
And then from an environmental perspective, carrots are one of the most water efficient crops there are. So we're really excited about, you know, the fact that it has a low environmental footprint, small environmental footprint. And then even from a nutrition perspective, so of course carrots are, are nutrient dense, a lot of vitamin A and beta carotene. But what's interesting is carrots are one of the few crops where when you slightly cook them, you, they actually increase their bioavailability. They're more nutritious, slightly cooked than they are raw. And so um, that feels good to be able to um, present that kind of product uh, for a parent to give to a kid instead of these fruit chews, which are you know, nutritionally empty. And so those who are listening right now, they can't see the packaging, of course, but um, the video, the people who are watching the video can see, but it's, it's very vibrant. You know, you spent a lot of time on the packaging. So when you were approaching, you know, since it's a kid's product, did you give the same level of detail to say the mushroom jerky or did you know going to this one? No, you know, we really need to pay more attention to the design of, of the packaging. Well, we pay attention to design all the time. It's such a critical piece. Branding and, and packaging are actually just as just as important as the formulation on these things because unless you know uh the consumer wants you know reaches out and sees it um it's not gonna buy we are, as a startup we don't have the advertising dollars to be out there you know drawing people's attention to it so the package has to work really hard the name has to work really hard and uh, and then we have to work really hard with our retailers to help them draw attention to it you know we can't just put it on the shelf and assume people will, will come to it so um, and, and so far, the retailers understand that and have been great partners around that. And yeah, we, we, we played on the fact that carrots, a carrot actually looks like a rocket chip. So, you know, the carrot's taking off. We um, chose fun names like orange mango moonbeam and sour cherry berry blast off um, and just made these fun. And I also will say, you know, we, we found a way to make these um, gender neutral. You know, these aren't a boys or kids product. This is hopefully something all kids can get excited about. 